Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and welcome to the Bears Hall of Discipline today. We are in 2 Kings chapter 15. We're reconnecting here with King Azariah, or better known as Uzziah. This is where we're going to start out. He was a pretty good king. Uh, all in all, he will go down in history as, as being a good and godly king. Made some mistakes, as we all do. And uh, he is the king that um, things were going so well, so prosperous, so powerful. He felt so anointed that he could go in and take the place of the priests. And that was his fatal error. That is not where God wanted him to exercise his authority. Uh, probably a good way, good way of putting it. That was for the priests, the priests alone. Sometimes as God blesses us, sometimes we believe we're capable of biting off more than we can chew. And that's something we have to be careful for. But all in all, Uzziah is going to go down in history as a, as a very good king. And with that, let's begin in 2 Kings chapter 15. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, began Azariah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, to reign. Uzziah's father also, all in all, was a good king. Made a mistake or two towards the end, and the people were not happy about it, and they rose up against him and um, executed him, assassinated him. And that sometimes happens. He got a good push, and they made some mistake, and the people revolt against him, and he is killed by his own people. Not the way to go, but as we go through Kings and Chronicles, we see Israel's really in flux because they're, you know, one king is a good king and they, they come to revival and they have a bad king and they go right back to idolatry. It's a, it's a real mess for a while. So we're picking up with Azariah, King Uzziah. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, began Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, to reign. So in the southern kingdom, we have this king. And it notes that Jeroboam is king in the north in Samaria. Sixteen years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned 52 years. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, he, he is registered as reigning 52 years, but some of that was he was locked away in a, a private home with leprosy, and his son kind of held the duties of the king while he was locked up with leprosy because a leper couldn't go out and mingle with the people because they were contagious terribly. Anyway, back to the story of Uzziah. Reigned 52 years, good king. His mother's name was Jack Coliah of Jerusalem. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah had done. So Amaziah's father was a good king even though the people rose up against him and had him executed. He was a good king, Uzziah was, save that the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burned incense still on the high places. Why did they keep gravitating to that? Do not know. It was, uh, made him, maybe it made them feel like they were part of the people so they could be friends with them. Uh, many a Christian has backslidden for the sake of having friends because, you know, if you're on fire for the Lord, people don't really want to hang out with you and have their their whiskey booze parties and their marijuana festivals. They, they just really don't want to hang out with Christians that abstain from all of that because they want to love Jesus and please him. That's what we want to do. We want to please Jesus. 
The world wants to please themselves, get themselves rich. Christians, we have a different purpose, and you'll find that. That in your life, an enjoyable day is drinking coffee and studying your Bible all day. That's a great thing to do. Going hiking and praying to the Lord. Drawing close to Jesus. A time of prayer is wonderful for a Christian. The world really don't want to hear all that. They want to slip right past all that. And... But we really don't know. Just simply that Israel seemed to keep gravitating to the same sin. Sacrificing and burning incense on the high places, up on the mountains, the hills. But quite frankly, it really doesn't tell us why they kept gravitating to this. Do not know. Now we bring up the, the bad incident of Uzziah. The Lord smote King Uzziah that he was a leper until the day of his death. And he dwelt in a secure and private home. And Jotham, the king's son ruled over the house, judging the people of the land. So his son actually was uh, kind of the president, shall we say, of the southern kingdom of Judah, um, although officially Uzziah was the king. In the 30 and 8th year of Azariah, king of Judah, did Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, reign over over Israel and Samaria six months. He ruled for six months. That usually it was a sign that he was an evil king in the north. So we kind of shift to the north for a bit, tells us about the north. Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, reigned over Israel and Samaria in the north for six months. And as I said, he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. As his fathers had done, he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. And Shalom, the son of Jabesh, conspired against him and executed him before the people, and they slew him, and he reigned in his stead. So a six-month reign. Biblically, when you see a king reigning for a very short time, it meant he was evil. The rest of the acts of Zechariah, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. This was the word of the Lord, which he spake unto Jehu, saying, Thy sons shall sit on the throne of Israel unto the fourth generation, and so it came to pass. So, this was kind of the word of the Lord. Jehu was a good ruler king, executed judgment and brought discipline to the land, killed off the wicked people. Now it was good. But as he finished that all up and God was really with him, he fell right into idolatry. And God judged him because of it. So his line is winding down, winding up. That's they're, they're finished up now. Verse 13, Shalom, the son of Jabesh, began to reign in the ninth and thirtieth year of Uzziah. So the thirty-ninth year of Uzziah, that happened in the north. And he reigned a full month in Samaria. So we... We have another shift happening. He reigned for a month, so we see bad things are about to happen again. Then Menahem, the son of Gadi, went up from Terzah and came to Samaria and smote Shalom. So he, this guy executed Shalom, who executed the other guy. He slew him, and he reigned in his stead. So went to Zechariah, then Shalom executed him, and then another guy came and executed Shalom, and then he took charge. The rest of the acts of Shalom and his conspiracy which he made, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. Then Menahem smote Tip, Tipsa, 
and all that were therein, and the coast thereof from Terzah, because they opened it not up to him. Therefore he smote it, and all the women therein that were pregnant with children, he killed them brutally. These people didn't mess around in their, in their wars. In the nine and thirtieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, began Manahem, the son of Gadi, to reign over Israel, and he reigned ten years in Samaria. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he departed not all his days from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. So it goes from basically one bad king to the next up in, up in Samaria. There was a very small glow of the Lord in the north, north Kingdom, if at all. In the Southern Kingdom, sometimes there were good kings and sometimes there were bad ones. Sometimes there was, was revival and sometimes there was a fall, great falling away. So they were. It was a great roller coaster ride for the Southern Kingdom. In the North, they were used to the evil, and eventually, they're carried away captive first. Their evil eventually catches up with them. As J. Vernon McGee says, roosters do come home. And they get in your your chicken coop and they're they're howling away at sun up. And the expression means basically if you have things hidden in your life, one day they're gonna come up. It's best to just confess them as sin, ask God's forgiveness and admit them. That way that's free and clean. You, you got everything's out in the open. I say, yep, yeah, I already said that. I already confessed that sin and God forgave me. And that's a part of my life that was long ago. It's better that way. Now, Paul, the king of Assyria, came against the land in the north of Menahem, gave Paul a thousand talents of Syria, silver, to the Assyrians that he might remove his hand from attacking them. So it gave him a, like a peace treaty money payoff. And so Menahem turned around and taxed the people of the land. Menahem exacted a tax of Israel, even all the mighty men of wealth, each man 50 shekels of silver, and gave it to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria returned back and stayed not in the land of Israel in the north. So he took this this bribe or payoff to stop attacking them, and the Syrian king went back to his land, and Israel uh, took a tax upon the people to pay for the pay payoff, and the uh, warring armies returned to their own land. The rest of the acts of Menahem and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? Menahem slept with his fathers, and Pekah his son reigned in his stead. In the fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Menahem, began to reign over Israel and Samaria, and he reigned two years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, but Pekah, the son of Remaliah, a captain of his, conspired against him and executed him in Samaria. So we have another assassination because he was evil. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord had no protection for him. So he was assassinated in his own home, in the palace of the king. Argob and Aria, and with him 50 men of the Gileadites, killed him, and they reigned in his stead. The rest of the acts of Pekahiah and all that he did, behold, they're written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. So the the northern kingdom is in a real mess. Judah's not far behind, but the northern kingdom of Samaria, the ten tribes in the north, they're in a real mess. 
a lot of sin, wickedness, idolatry. When you rebel against the Lord, expel, expect your life to be a mess and that God will expel the goodness and righteousness that perhaps you once enjoyed in your life. And he's doing that to get your attention. The evil man's attention, even in his evil, God's trying to get his attention so there comes repentance. We're going to see that as we go through Kings and Chronicles, that even a wicked king comes to repentance and then God has mercy because the man repents of his sin and confesses his sins and relents and turns to the Lord with all his heart. And that's what God asks all of us to do. Now we move on. Verse 27 of 2 Kings 15. In the 52nd year of Uzziah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Remaliah, began to reign over Israel and Samaria, and he reigned 20 years. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, came tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, and took Yijon and Abel, Meth, Makkah, Genoa, Kadesh, Hazor, Gilead, and Galilee, in all the land of Naphtali, and he carried them away to Assyria. So... They bribed off the northern tribes of the Syrians and Assyrians. Uh, but eventually, judgment came to the land. They were drug off to a foreign land in slavery and bondage because of their evil and wickedness against the Lord Yahweh. And Hosea, the son of Elah, made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Remaliah, and executed him. He assassinated him, slew him, and reigned in his stead in the 20th year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. The rest of the acts of Pekah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel and Judah. In the second year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, began Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, to reign. He reigned 25 years old. He reigned for a long time. He was 25 years old, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. All in all, he was a pretty good king, the son of Uzziah. Jotham was pretty good. He was, he was pretty good. And he married into a good line of the peoples. And he, for the most part, did right in the sight of the Lord, the Bible says. So verse 33, we pick back up in our reading. 25 years old, he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. And once again, howbeit the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burned incense still in the high places, and he built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. So he did some good building, and there was some righteousness in the land, and there's still some things that he allowed to tolerate. And once you tolerate sin in your church, in your family, it's like a cancer. that Eventually it destroys, and it has to be cut out. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days the Lord began to send against Judah now Rezin, the king of Syria, Pekah, the son of Remaliah, and Jotham slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. Ahaz his son reigned in his stead. So 
they tolerated this sin because they were supposed to only be worshiping officially in Jerusalem, at the temple, on the altars, under the priest's supervision. That's where the worship was to take place. Didn't mean they couldn't have a, a deer on the barbecue or an ox on the barbecue or sheep on the barbecue, but that wasn't the point. When it comes to worship and offering the, the Passover lamb on the altar, they're supposed to bring it to Jerusalem to the temple where the priests would oversee the sacrifice so that it was done properly. But see, the people were sacrificing these spiritual offerings on the high places which God did not approve. He did not tell them to do that. That's something that they practiced from the, the pagans around them. That's what they did. And so the, both in the north and the southern kingdoms, they did that same tradition, but they were only supposed to offer the, the feasts, the three feasts that all the men were supposed to go to and they usually took their families, were to be held in Jerusalem. The sacrificial feasts of the Passover lamb once a year and all the offerings and the gifts were supposed to be presented to the priests at the temple, not on mountains and hills that were made for themselves. And eventually, God begins to judge the southern kingdom as well of, as judging the northern kingdom. And next time we pick up, uh, we're going to see Ahaz. And um, he was not a good king. God had mercy on them. Um, but we're going to see that Israel, both in the north and the south, God is allowing the pagan nations around them to overrun them and afflict them because they rejected God Almighty. They rejected Yahweh. They rejected his way and started making their own way to God. And that's not the way God has it. We now see it is through the Son of God, Yeshua, unto our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by the power of his Holy Spirit. He is the only way. And you must come through the Son, Jesus Christ, unto our Heavenly Father. That's the way God has ordained it now. See now, here, back in the Old Testament, they looked in a mirror dimly. They didn't see all the promise because the Messiah hadn't come yet. They had the sacrifices, which were a picture of what is to come. But those of us now, we now look back to the sacrifice that the Son of God gave on the cross of his life. And we all now come through him. He is the only door. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Yeshua, unto our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. He is the only way. You acknowledge the Son, you will acknowledge the Father. If you acknowledge the Father, you must acknowledge the Son. They go together, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he will regenerate you if you will come to repentance and faith, believe and hope and love in Jesus Christ the Son. If you have not done that, do it right now. Confess your sins. Repent of your sins. I mean, stop sinning. And you know what's sin. God has given you a conscience. Stop the sin. It's called repentance. Confess that you've done wrong. And now accept Jesus Christ with all of your heart. May it be the purpose of your soul. Jesus Christ. Enter through the door of Jesus Christ and get on the narrow road unto eternity. And follow the Son unto the Father in the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you, friends, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.